I want you to take a look around the room. Go ahead, look around. If we were sitting here 30 years ago and represented the global workforce, half of this room would be going into agriculture after graduation, half. Today, less than 2% of us in the United States work in this field. So instead of half of this room, we're now looking at three or four people. Now, I already work in the industry, so I'll count me as one. But for the other slots, our company is hiring. <laughs> now, the rates of agricultural workers in both the US and globally have halved in the last 30 years. So when I think about automation, in our industry, it's already come. And the effects of automation are only going to continue to rise. Now, that 2% number may seem really small, but in fact, it's quite large. I work in the horticulture industry. It's a small subset of the agriculture industry. And we grow specialty crops, fruits, vegetables, flowers, even cannabis. And we grow it indoors in most cases. And in just this small subset, we spend $7 million on labor each year. $7 million, just a small subset of agriculture. And when I think about running a business, one of the keys to success in running a business is how do you manage the unknown, the risk? And labor is not just an expense, it's a risk. Immigration policy, rising wages, labor shortages, all of these can kill my business. So today I wanna to take us on a journey of what it's like to be an indoor grower. The day in, day out challenges that they face in how to manage a business and how they're thinking about using technology to manage that risk. This is one of our customers that we work with, and it's an incredible operation. You have a glass greenhouse filled with water, and a tiny seed starts out on one side, floats all the way to the other, and in about 25 days, out comes a beautiful head of lettuce ready for harvest. And this grower is growing a lot of lettuce. They're doing about a million pounds of lettuce every year, which is about $3 million in revenue. And as you can probably see from the photos, there's not many people working in this facility, but there are about 30 workers. So they're spending about $750,000 a year on labor. And this car is pretty good. They're doing about 20% operating margins. But we can't just think about the margin itself. We have to also think about the cost to build a greenhouse. This facility costs them $6 million to build. At 20% margins, that means it's 10 years before this grower ever begins to make any money. So we've got a problem. How do we increase the amount of money that a grower is making, decrease that payback period so that growers can start to make money faster so that we can scale the industry? So I want you to think about this problem for a minute. I recently asked a group of MBA students to help me solve it, so think about it for a minute. How do you do this? How do we increase the amount of money that growers are making on a day-to-day -day basis and speed up this timeline? Well, their answer, was let's use artificial intelligence to eliminate the people from the equation. Well, it's not a bad start. At $750,000, labor represents a third of this grower's cost. If we can bring that all the way down to zero, you increase your margins up to 45% from 20. That payback period goes from 10 years down to four and a half. But that's not the real equation. AI is expensive. It's also, in most cases, it's not yet commercially ready. But let's assume for a minute it is. And this grower invests $2 million into the sensors and robotics, hardware, imaging, all of the things that they need in order to fully automate the facility. Well, $2 million adds to your cost. So their payback period goes up from that four and a half to six. Is that good enough? One of the other growers we work with is a tomato grafting company. I'm gonna guess that most people haven't spent a lot of time with tomato grafters, but it's an incredibly cool process. You take one tomato plant, cut it at its rootstock, take a second, cut it at its rootstock, pair the two pieces together, clip them, and set them for growth. And the reason you do this is because it sets a more robust, hardier plant better for profitability. So I asked this grower, hey, this is a really repetitive process. It, you happen every day. Why hasn't this been automated yet? This grower had actually had an automation company on site the week before I got there, so he was already thinking about this. And the challenge is, one, it's expensive, and two, the mechanical arms can't yet do the precision work that's necessary for growing plants. But this grower instead invested in his people who were already doing this process relatively efficiently. 
But this grower also had a lot of technology that he already had on the farm. He had invested millions of dollars, for example, into a tomato sorting machine that had become obsolete. Why? Because his genetic technology had become so good that the failure rate of crops was not affecting his business at all. So mechanical automation isn't always the answer. Sometimes we have to invest in both our people and new technology. But what if we valued people in the equation? What if we used technology to make people more efficient so they could do their jobs better? At the company I founded, Agrilis, we have a set of core values that lead us on our day-to-day decision making. And one of those core values is that we're a data company who believes in people. We have a fundamental thesis that making people more efficient is better for the grower's bottom line. Better for the grower's line. So we go back to that greenhouse from earlier. What are those 30 workers doing? Well, they're spending their time walking around, checking off things on clipboards. They're spending their time doing food safety compliance logging. They're moving things from one place to another. They're scouting for pests and disease. They're doing lots of things that are incredibly inefficient work hours. So what if we could shift those work hours from inefficient work hours to profit driving work hours? What if the grower didn't have to spend his time sitting in an office planning work for next week and instead could get down in the field with his workers and grow the highest quality crops, demanding a higher price on retail shelves? Let's add 10% to revenue. What if the manager didn't have to spend his time, or her time, planning work for the next week and instead could look for new markets where he could sell for higher prices? Let's add 10% to revenue. And what if the team didn't have to spend their time checking off things on clipboards because they had software to do it automatically. And instead, they could spend their time doing R&D on new crop varieties that demand higher prices on retail shelves. Let's add 10% to revenue. We've just added 30% to the top line for this grower, which in comparison to the AI case alone is double the benefit to my 10-year period. And it's an 18x income benefit to me over that same 10-year period against the no technology case. This has to be the benefit of new technology. And any conversation around technology has to involve a conversation around the quality of the job itself. If we can use technology to create more efficient workers, we can create a new class of agricultural worker that is not just valuable, but valued. The newest, most cutting edge technologies on the market today are eventually going to become standard, inexpensive tools. That means that the real power and potential lies with the people who work in agriculture. So what if we could use technology to take that $7 billion horticultural spend each year and turn it into a $7 billion gain for the industry? That's the question we have to answer. Thank you.